So, hello everyone. So, today we will discuss a question based on Malice Law. And this question actually came in GATE 2019 examination. And in this question, we were given n set, uh, a set of n polarizers with the vertical pass axis. And we were also given that uh, the mth polarizer in this set actually makes an angle of m pi by 2 n with the vertical axis. So, what does that mean actually? First of all, let's clear out what actually it means. So, what will be the angle or the final angle of the nth uh, or the direction of the nth polarizer in this set? So, of course, this means that the n polarizers are arranged in a horizontal line. And each polarizer is actually making an angle of uh, pi by 2 n with just the previous one or the next one. That means any two consecutive polarizers in this uh, set will be having an angle of pi by 2 n in this case. But what about with respect to the first polarizer? So I have a first, I have the very first, let's call that as the 0th polarizer and we arrange it at 0 degrees. So the next polarizer will be having an angle of pi by 2n with respect to the first polarizer or the 0th polarizer. Similarly, the number second will have the angle of 2 pi by 2n with respect to your 0th polarizer. Similarly, when we will come to the nth polarizer, so that will actually have an ang angle of n pi by 2n with respect to the first or the 0th polarizer that we have actually arranged in this line. So, what and you know, n pi by 2n. So, n and n will cancel over here and what is remaining will be pi by 2. That means the last polarizer that we have will have or will be rotated 190 degree. Its pass axis will be rotated by an angle of 90 degree. So, initially we were given that all these uh, polarizers have vertical pass axis. But since they are arranged in such a way that each and every polarizer is rotated by a certain angle and that angle is nothing but m pi by 2n where m is actually the number of uh, the number of the polarizer that we are at. So the angle between the first and the last will be nothing but pi by 2. So if my first is vertical my first polarizer has a vertical pass the last or the nth polarizer will have actually the horizontal pass why because it is pi by 2 rotated now it is given in the question so no matter what your incident the no matter what is the polarization of your incident light what you will get at the end will depend upon the nth polarizer. So it would have been very simple. There are two cases in which our life would have been very simple. The very first case is when all the polarizers are arranged parallelly to each other. That means all if all had vertical pass axis, every even in the arrangement they will have the vertical pass axis. So in that case, the incident light which is vertically polarized will pass through all these polarizers without suffering any intensity loss and we would have got or uh, got the same intensity with the same polarization at the end of the nth polarizer. But this is not the case. <coughs> so now instead of having uh, you can say n polarizer, let's say we had just two polarizers. And both will be 
arranged perpendicularly to each other then also it would have been very easy because we know it follows the malus law that means cos square theta uh, with malus law is what i equals to i not cos square theta where i not is the light incident on the previous polarizer and the theta is the angle between the two uh, polarizers so which is in this case is pi by 2 and cos pi by 2 we know is 0 so the net output intensity would have been 0 this would have been very simple but now let's sandwich one more polarizer in between these two polarizers then would we receive or get the same output that means the zero output no we will not get it this is the magic or the catch of this problem that if there are two or more polarizers if there are more than two polarizers and the first and the last one is at are orthogonally placed but the middle one is not orthogonally placed in that case your net output will not be zero it will have some intensity no matter it will be lesser than the than your incident but it will be you will get some light <coughs> because the angle which matters uh, the most is the angle between the two consecutive uh, you can say two consecutive uh, polarizer so when we say that for the net zero output intensity you have to place the two consecutive polarizers at 90 degrees and not the sum of all the polarizers so this is the very first thing that you need to keep in mind and since we are taking uh, an example of let's say first we take a simpler one with three polarizers so the first polarizer is at zero degrees the second will be automatically be 45 degrees and the last will be again at 45 degrees with respect to the second one and not with respect to the first one so the incident light has the intensity let's say i not so it will since it is also vertically polarized and the first very first polarizer is also has a vertical pass so the intensity which passes or passes through it will be will remain same so it will be i naught now when this intensity passes through the second polarizer now it will follow the malus law which is i naught cos square theta and theta over here for the second polarizer is 45 degrees and cos 45 is 1 by root 2 so the net intensity will be i naught by 2 and similarly when it again passes now this i naught by 2 will be actually uh, will actually be incident for the third polarizer and again it will follow the malus law because the pass axis has changed the polarization has changed for the light beam and you know that since it's uh, polarized so now the light will be 45 degrees inclined to the initial one and when it will come out of the final or final or the third polarizer it will be 45 degrees motor that means it will be now 90 degrees or the horizontally plane or in the horizontal axis initially it was vertical you have to keep the changing the polarization of the incident light as well direction of the incident light it will keep on changing with respect to the uh, change in the pass axis of the polarizer so since the last has the pass axis in the horizontal direction our light will always be horizontally horizontally polarized you have to keep this in mind and the intensity will be following the malus law at each and every step so now we were given that we have n polarizers 
or you, we were given actually two set of uh, polarizers one has n1 number of polarizers and the other has n2 polarizers so n2 is more than n1 this is given so we have to compare the intensities net output intensities at if at the end of both these sets when the vertical polarized light is incident upon these and we have to also tell the direction of the output beam so direction we have already covered that this will be always horizontally horizontal uh, in the horizontal direction whereas for the intensity we have to apply the malice law at each and every step since they have made our life a bit easier by giving us uh, by keeping the angles of the consecutive polarizers equal so we can directly apply the formula for this uh, condition which can be given by by i equals to r naught cos of uh, <coughs> pi by 2 n minus 1 to the power of 2 n minus 1 so this power is at the cos term as given as shown in the equation so we don't have to do anything else in this so we just have to equate in the values of n over here which is n1 and n2 and then we have to find which has the maximum intensity so for that matter let's take an example where n1 can be given by is equals to 5 you can take any other number as well and n2 as 10 let's say so you just have to calculate it and you will find that the intensity of n2 will be more than the intensity of n1 so the answer to this question is the option number C. So but one thing one should uh, think about is so why it is that the number as the number of polarizers in the set increases the intensity also increases at the output. So why does this happen? So you can just simply think of think it off as with the increasing number of polarizers the angle between the two consecutive polarizers is actually decreasing and lesser the theta value in the cost term more will be the intensity so if you keep on increasing the number of polarizers through which the light beam is passing then the intensity will be greater at the output let's try one more question on this so instead of two different sets let's say you are now given a single set of n polarizers and now you have to find the intensity at the polarizer n1 and n2 so n1 with the condition that n1 is less than n2 is less than n so this is one complete so you are starting from the zeroth polarizer you will come up till n1 at that point you have to find the intensity and the direction of the incident beam then continue to till n2 then again you have to find and then at the you reach up till the end to find the final outcome of the uh, beam so this if you try to solve this question this will give you a better feeling of, of uh, what is happening in between the polarizers and what is happening to the light how the light is actually uh, passing from one polarizer to the other so this will give you some more confidence to solve such questions and will help you in future advancement as well so with this, I would like to thank you all for listening to me. So thank you.